Uh, what's going on everybody? Raptor Wrench is back for another video. Today we have the Mark V GTI. We're going to be doing something that most of you guys are experiencing or have experienced in the past. As you can see we got some headliner fabric here and some adhesive spray or glue, whatever you want to call it. But you can see, unfortunately, the very notorious headliner sag. It's very common on the Mark V and the Mark VI generation for the GTIs, Jetta, Passat, and so on and so forth. From the factory, these cars use way too much material, and over time, the glue kind of loses its strength. And unfortunately, over time, the material starts sagging. So we're going to put an end to that because I'm tired of looking at this eyesore and the staples and the glue left over from the previous owner. Um, we're going to go ahead and install this stuff right here. We went with the black. If you guys have been following the channel for a long time, you've probably seen the Mark V GTI that I had, the white one, and you saw that I had the red headliner. Unfortunately, I wasn't doing YouTube at the time. Um, so I did that one off camera by myself and that came out great. So we're going to do this one today with black and we're going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial so you guys can do this yourselves and save yourself from some money and not have to go to an upholstery shop or some kind of body shop or whatever the case might be. So everything you see here is all you need. Um, you might need a wire brush. I'll, I'll link some of those down below that you can get away with when I'm scraping the old glue off. But most importantly, there's a little trick of the trade. If you have an old flip-flop, this rubber style it actually removes that adhesive glue a lot easier. So if you have one of these lying around the house, you know, um, you could save yourself some money. But if not, you get the, um, the wire brushes and so on and so forth. But everything will be linked down below. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first thing we're gonna do, you don't necessarily have to do it, but I like to disconnect the battery because we're gonna be fooling with um, pillars and um, upholstery that's right next to airbags, the side curtains. So I'm just gonna disconnect it you know to be safe so I advise um, taking off the negative cable and just setting that to the side so we have no power to those airbags just in case you god forbid you know puncture it or whatever the case may be just a preventative little thing Put this cap back on so it can't physically go back on now we're gonna make our way inside the interior and start disassembling everything all right so as you can see here um, the previous owner or the guy before him um, tried gluing it and I guess it's splattered all over this. It drive me nuts, so I'll have to clean that up after. But anyways, we're gonna start up from the front and essentially what we gotta do is remove everything that's pretty much clamping the headliner to the, um, to the roof. So essentially we gotta take this guy out of the way. There's gonna be a screw here and a screw there. We gotta take the handles off. We gotta take this whole unit off and then the handles there and the handles in the back. But Pretty much to do this, on the back side of this little tab, there's a little door. It might take me a second to get it off. So try not to block you guys. And you just kind of pry that out of the way. And then that will show the T20. Okay, so we're gonna get that T20 out of the way. Okay, and then that should release this guy. Now oh, he's hanging on by a thread, of course. Boom. And there's that little tab it goes into. And that was just kind of keeping the uh, headliner in place as well. So we'll have to make our way to this guy here. And once again, you just kind of got to do that, pry it out of the way. Get your torque spit. center home so now that's loose I believe there's like a little lip that it catches on right there all right so now that we got that out of the way we'll remove that bolt set to the side as you can see there's a wire that goes into here that's for you know when you open this it lets the switch know to light it up so we're just gonna let that dangle for right now because the switch goes the connectors like right up here but that's okay it's not taunt it's really light so we'll set that aside We'll make our way over to the handles here and once again you just got to pry these little doors open and there's more torque spits in there go ahead and remove those and these are long suckers okay now this should wiggle out there's some tabs it kind of sits in so just be very careful with it because it does go into like a plastic tab just gotta be very careful. Come on, when I say they're long screws, I'm gonna there we go. And we'll just close those doors up with the bolt in there so we don't lose the bolts. 
turn that way. We can close that. But now that's out of the way. And now we'll do same for the passenger side and then of course the rears and then we'll start disconnecting this side and then the pillars to release the headliner and this as well. So we'll start removing all these handles and then that visor. Before we get into the rest of today's video, we just want to take a few seconds to thank today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Do you guys find yourself at the gas pump more than you'd like and spending more money than you would like? Because we sure do. Gas prices have been out of control lately, especially when we're filling up our gas guzzling V8 Mustang, our Audi S3, and our GTI that require the highest octane fuel. As a car enthusiast, not being able to drive our pride and joy is not an option. So we have to find another way to save money, right? Being that everyone has a cell phone and is most likely paying way more than they would like to per month, you could save if you switch to Mint Mobile, who we are proud to be partnering with in today's video. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads of Ryan Reynolds, who is also an owner. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? But let me tell you how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers a premium wireless service as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network, so why should you pay more than you have to to access the same network? You keep your current device and phone number and easily switch services. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. Mint Mobile offers unlimited nationwide talk and text plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. If you're interested in reliable coverage and fast data for a fraction of the cost, head on over to mintmobile.com slash ratchetwrenches to get started today. Also, it's gonna be linked down below in our video description. If you guys already made the switch, let us know in the comment section. With your new monthly savings from Mint Mobile, you'll have more money to do what you love. For us, put that pedal to the metal. All right, so now that you saw, let's get all the side pieces out. It's time to work on this middle guy here, and then of course the one in the rear. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is take off some of these trim pieces. You could use a trim tool, really. You could use a flathead, it doesn't really matter. Just kind of pry them out of the way. We're dealing with plastic, so once again, just be careful. Get that guy out of the way. Should be able to get this guy out of the way. Clips in. There's two screws right there. And once again, those are T20s. Get that out of the way. Oh, we might have to take this plastic piece off right here. Got all LEDs in there, which don't even work. Boom. So now we have the panel exposed. We'll just disconnect this guy right here. It's just a little blue tab, push it in, boom, released. And we'll set this aside. You wanna be careful not to get any dirt, debris, or water, of course, or anything like that. Then we got two more T30s. To take those guys out of the way. out of the way and we'll get the next step. So now that we got those two screws out of the way, there's two more which are hidden under here. So we gotta take this little trap door out of the way. And you can just kind of pry it apart. Um, some tabs that probably will come close to breaking. This thing needs some better days anyways. Alright, so we should just be held in by the bottom. There we go. The bottom right there. There's a couple tabs in the back and then two in the front that kind of just hook it. But now that's out of the way, we're going to have to clean this up. So now let's get those last two T. Ooh, are those guys a different size? Indeed they are. They're probably a T15. All right, we're going to have to get some T15ers. 
All right, so we got our T15 on these. There's just two. That should be that. And then this thing should just come down. It has been previously glued, but bam. So now that we got these out of the way, like I said, we'll um, clean this up before install. But let's make our way to the rear one, and then it's time to start pulling the pillars down. So we made our way to the back. This one probably don't even need a trim tool. It should be pretty straightforward. You can kind of just pull the face off with the little lens. And then there's no bolts holding this one in or anything. There's two tabs on the uh, back side here. You push them in. We'll do one at a time. You should be able to get it down under. And then that side. And then of course you have your wire connector and it's just the two tabs. Get it out of the way. Boom. That is it for removing anything in the way. Like I said up front, it's time to get to this pillar, these two side pillars, and then the two pillars in the front. Of course, that one there, and we'll be able to release um, the headliner. And like I said, why we removed the batteries, because as you can see, these are all labeled airbag. There's a side curtain on both sides, so it's just a precaution that I take, and I suggest taking, um, just to dis disconnect the batteries, so don't have any live airbag. But uh, yeah, let's get this out of the way and start cranking. So the next step we're gonna do is remove this pillar right here. I'm not trying to make eye contact with you guys because this light is blinding. But the first thing we wanna do is kinda just remove this little airbag tab here. These break extremely easy, so just be careful. And if you break it, it's not the end of the world. You can kinda just shove them in there. And we have one broken tab, but that'll do. And under there, there is a T. I believe it's a T20, let me just double check. Yes sir, it's a T20. We'll get that guy out of the way. And once we get this side out of the way and that side out of the way, we'll be able to kind of bend it down a little bit without you know, actually putting a crease, a bend in the, the board. And we'll be able to get the wire from back here and just release this so we don't have this dangling anymore. But let's go ahead and take that T20. All right, nice magnet tool or something would come in very good handy right now to pull it out. But I think we're gonna try and bypass it. Okay. And don't, just be careful, but you don't have to be afraid. Everything's kind of just pushed into place with some tabs. So like I was saying, here's that airbag. So just gotta be careful with that. But all these yellow tabs, or whoa, those are not yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I check. So all these tabs are what really bolt into here and we'll be able to secure it back in place. But for right now, we're just kind of going to maneuver this out of the way. Might have to open up the door a little bit just to get access to that. Actually, there might be one more screw here. Let me take a look. I haven't done one of these in a long, long time. Nope, it was just held in by this little trim piece. But boom, there's the pillar. And it's just, like I said, those white clips just go into here. And then you have that screw. And that's all that really holds in. I don't know how we have some freaking animal, I guess, <laughs> living in here. So who knows if we'll find that upon our, <laughs> our digging and diving. But we're going to go ahead and do that side. But for the most part, it's going to be a time lapse. And we're going to start working our way back. So this pillar here, it should be the same thing, just under this little tab. And then, of course, we have this, so we just kind of got to maneuver around that. And we should be almost ready to pull it out completely. All right, so now that we got the other side pillar out of the way, we're able to pull this headliner down, and we were able to just kind of snake the wire through there. And Wes is just going to go ahead and um, pull that apart. It's just a push clip. Let me see if I can get it on camera. But pulls that apart. Now we can set that side visor just over there on top, and then we're gonna work our way back.
So as you just saw, we took out the whole driver's side, and I'm leaving them in there. I don't have to, you don't have to take them all the way out. As long as you get that board out and slide it out, that's all that matters. Um, we actually went ahead and removed the back trim here, which freed up that little 10 millimeter bolt that was holding in right there. And as you can see, this thing is ready to come out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side off camera, but in the meantime, we're gonna prop up this side because you really don't want to cause any kind of tension or crease in that board. You kind of want to keep it as firm and structural as possible. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that and then you'll see us struggle on the time lapse of how to pull it out. Finally got the headliner out. It might not look like it took us a while with the time lapse and speed, but it is a pretty meticulous job and kind of slow moving because you got to slide it out without adjusting the uh, the shapes or anything. But you got to be careful with these fins. I just call them fins. I don't know what the proper terminology is, but they get hung up on some of the sides. So you kind of got to like bend them in a little, ever so slightly just to maneuver it out the back. It's easier with two people. Kind of just wiggle it side to side. But yeah, this is what we're dealing with. We have probably a bunch of staples to get through. Got to remove all of them. Then we'll be able to pull this whole material back. And then the fun begins. We got to scuff up, pretty much get rid of all that, that glue and fabric. And that's where the fun, really time consuming, messy part is. Um, you know, you can take a wire brush, like I said, or we're going to even try the, um, the flip flop method. But yeah, before we do that, let's start taking these staples out get cracking. We'll set up a nice little table, kind of go ham the both of us to get all this glue off because you really want to get down to the bare board because if you glue on top of this, it's not going to adhere to it and it's really just going to have the same problem all over again. So we're going to make sure we do it right one time and one time only. So as you can see now, we pretty much got this thing down to the board. Yeah, there's still a little bit of glue. Um, I mean, you could be a perfectionist to go all day at this, but as long as you get most of the uneven, you know, the old fabric, like the backing of the old fabric, you'll have no problem adhering to this. This is just gunked up glue. We really couldn't get that off. Um, but yeah, we made sure to go around the back side because that's where we're going to be wrapping the fabric. So, you know, it makes sure you have a really good secure um, you know, mating surface. But yeah, pretty much this is what we're looking with. It's a very tedious, messy job. That glue gets everywhere and it hardens up. It's really, really um, time consuming to do. Um, as you guys saw scrubbing it all off, there was a bunch of leftover um, material that was just kind of globbered up. And we took some wet ones or any kind of household wipes and kind of just brushed it kind of onto it and it really picked up all that glue. And that really helped, so that got us a lot of that glue out of the way. But now it's pretty much going to be, you know, um, getting the new fabric, kind of laying it down and seeing how it's going to mold and everything. And then we'll start gluing it. Because once you glue it, there's no going back. Once it's touching that glue, that fabric, man, it's, you know, you'll have to be pulling all that fabric off. So you got one real take at it, so you want to make sure you take your time and do it right. So Wes and I are going to set up the fabric and kind of, let you guys know once we get it all set up. Alright guys, so we made our way downstairs. We're actually going to utilize this ping pong table, just make it a little bit easier. We put a tarp down just to collect all the extra adhesive because we're going to get closest to the edges, so we want to make sure we don't ruin the table. But um, I guess in the beginning we're going to link this all down below. We ended up going with black. There's multiple different colors and we ordered the 96 by 60. So we actually had a bunch of extra which we just cut off and set to the side. 
but we're just kind of mocked up right now. We're just kind of, um, nothing's glued or anything like that, but we have it just enough, maybe like almost like two inches at most over the sides. So that way we can tuck it around and kind of glue it and make sure we don't have any issue where, um, you know, it's going to peel back up, but this will all like wrap around like that. And then, um, pretty much we're just going to set you up on a time lapse, but what we're going to do is we're going to remove all this. We're going to start shaking up the can, spray it to say four to eight inches away from the headliner board itself, and you just kind of got to do a pattern. You want to lather the whole thing up in like a nice neat pattern, and then you're going to lay down the headliner and you're just kind of going to work it from the inner to the out. So you kind of follow all the bends and you know all the lips, etc. But like I said, you want to work from the inner out so you're not shorting yourself or having a bubble. It's not the worst scenario if you get bubbles up here. It's going to be really hard where the front of the um, the board is because you got the where the sunglasses go and the dome light, and then you have the visors. So if you get to here and it's a little difficult, not the end of the world, you'll have a lot of things kind of hiding it, like the visor will hide the imperfections. And we're novices. You guys are probably novices if you're looking up how to do it. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you got one shot, so make it count. So um, we're going to set you up on a time lapse right now and we're going to start cracking away at it and see how it turns out. So as you just saw, I think the camera cut out for a little bit of it, but hopefully we secured most of the footage. But man, it, it looks freaking fantastic. It's not perfect by no means, but it turned out fantastic. We cut a little slits for the um, the holes for the handles, and we'll probably fool with that on the car. Um, we cut the, the uh, slit for the rear dome light, map light, whatever you want to call it, and then same for the front. But man, this thing is starting to look is perfect. But yeah, it looks so much better than the, the gray that it was. This black is pretty damn cool. And then we got the tail ends, which is all gonna be hidden, but it's not perfect in the back, but it's all gonna be hidden, like I said. But yeah, I mean, the hardest part, I'd say just really take your time on these curves. As you can see, we got a little bit of a pocket there because it's really hard to wrap it around and bend it, but we'll probably touch that up maybe if we can. If not, we'll live with it. But now we're gonna make our way up to the car and start installing this in the reverse procedure and then show you guys you know the finished result so let's do that all right guys so we got into the garage we're just going to put some of the trim pieces on now um make the holes for that but we went ahead and hooked this wire back up i'm going to push this guy right back in place should be a tight fit boom that looks flawless now we'll put that little lens back on i mean you could do these on the car i'm just going to now just so it's easier to show you guys. And then I went ahead off camera and put that one in. But what you're gonna to wanna to do for these, just go from the back side, cut a little slip, and then just go 
all the way to the end, and all the way to the end that way. And you'll slide it in. The plug is on this side, so it's going to look like that. Put that guy in place. And bang. In there like swimwear. So that one's in, that one's in. We get this going because it is getting late. We're going to set you guys up on a time lapse. And we'll feed this in, and it's pretty much going to be the reverse procedure. There's no point of doing a step by step, so we'll just set you guys up. So we were originally planning on time-lapsing it, but it, it was just taking too long and the camera died. So unfortunately we didn't get the time-lapse, um, but it was really tough getting like all the pillars lined up and everything, but we managed to get it. So it's literally the reverse procedure. It's just a lot of tabs, a lot of finessing, really just time. Um, as you can see, we don't have the uh, driver's side rear handle on. Um, we actually got to work on that. We'll probably do that another day. Just something's not lined up, so we just kind of got to peel back the headliner on that side to get it um, to work properly. But we'll do that another day. But overall, the headliner looks freaking fantastic. There's some imperfections, um, but other than that, it's pretty good. We'll probably do like a, a brush over it so it makes it nice and, you know, um, consistent rather than have dark and then light spots everywhere. But overall, this came out fantastic. I'm super stoked. I'm sure Wes is super stoked. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, tips, pointers, whatever it is, just comment down below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Um, but yeah, this was a tutorial that a lot of people are going to look for. So hopefully we kind of nailed it and made it as user friendly and as easy to follow as possible. Without further ado, that's really going to end today's video. It's a long day, tired, you know, between filming and everything, it took a little longer than we expected, but that's going to wrap it for today, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.